This is KGW News at Sunrise. He has certainly displayed what we call the judicial temperament. This morning begins day three of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's confirmation hearing. Coming up this morning, a local legal expert weighs in on how it's going so far and what Jackson's historic appointment could mean. And this morning on Sunrise, how you can pick up a quick lunch or dinner idea from a James Beard nominated chef. And the best part, you're actually helping to end our homeless crisis. We wanted to create another avenue for success for our participants. So they're helping to prep it, they're helping to make it, they're helping to package it. How graduates of a workforce training program benefit from this new monthly soup subscription. Ah, that's a great deal. Okay, we are live this morning in Ridgefield, <laughs> kind of de-stressing with these furry guys. Look at that face, how can you resist? <laughs> They're actually therapy llamas and alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he showing his teeth or yeah. is that just, uh, yeah, yeah. is he not happy? <laughs> You're just hungry. Hard to tell. Um, we're going to tell you more about these guys and the nonprofit that runs the therapy service coming up a little later on Sunrise. Their little faces <laughs> just make me laugh, plus their little eyebrows. Love it. Those ears. <laughs> I'm, I'm like awake. They were kind of into it, too. Yeah. Like they're on TV. Very they, curious. They Good morning to you on this Wednesday. Okay, we hit 70 in a few spots yesterday. We did. Uh, so, Beaverton, congratulations. Scapoose, congratulations. That's it. Uh, PDX and Vancouver stopped at 67, which tied. That February 11th day for the warmest day we've had so but far. But it was this beautiful. Year. It was really nice. Salem, good morning. 68 was your high temperature yesterday. Um, yeah, it was really nice out when it really got going, right? Line of rain offshore, low clouds increasing, dense fog pockets. That sets the table for what to expect as you step outside. You know, 15 minutes ago, you couldn't see any lights from this Rose City camera. Now you can see a little bit of the downtown cityscape, but you can tell it's foggy. 49 is the early morning number. So to the bus stop we go. The shower chance begins this morning. Now with that said, most of the rain that we get today is probably from noontime on. Temperatures and the kids get out of school are still not bad. We could hit 60 degrees. Nina? All right, Rod, thank you. This morning will be day three of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's confirmation hearing. She faced hours of questioning yesterday from the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senators questioned her on everything from abortion to her background as a federal public defender. Several Republican senators say Judge Jackson is soft on crime, accusing her of being lenient in child pornography cases. Judge Jackson forcefully rejected that. I impose a significant sentence and all of the additional restraints that are available in the law. Because I understand how significant, how damaging, how horrible this crime is. She declined to answer whether she supports adding more justices to the Supreme Court, saying judges should not be speaking to political issues. If she's confirmed and Democrats likely have the votes without any GOP support, Jackson would become the first black woman on the nation's highest court. Oh, we talked to one of Oregon's top legal scholars about what this historic moment means for her, both personally and professionally. Here's Alma McCarty. This moment for us is inspirational for so many. It's for all of us. So for the people that may not have tried to even venture into a career in law. Dean Marcelin Burke of University of Oregon School of Law watched closely as Judge Katanji Brown Jackson faced hours of questioning during day two of her confirmation hearing. My record demonstrates my impartiality. She has certainly displayed what we call the judicial temperament. She calls Jackson's resume, her decade of experience on the bench, unimpeachable. There's really no room for challenging her experience, her knowledge of the law, her expertise. Jackson's background resonating with her personally. So as a lawyer, as a black woman, as a, a woman from the South, uh, with similar backgrounds, it, it means something to me on so many different levels. She, along with hundreds of other law professors across the country, expressed their support of Jackson and her qualifications in a letter, encouraging the Senate to move swiftly with the confirmation process. I went through a, a confirmation 
uh, hearing a process when I was nominated by President Barack Obama to be the Assistant Secretary for Land and Minerals at the Department of the Interior. And mind you, much lower stakes process, but important similarities. Burke explained the level of preparation was unparalleled, with lawmakers combing through and questioning everything you've written and said. They have an actual record, so they can look back at her over 570 opinions and so they don't have to guess about how would she approach a certain issue. Burke says the road to Judge Jackson's confirmation should be celebrated by many. The Supreme Court becoming more representative of the citizens of the United States. And that will be a, a, a magnificent manifestation of the ideals and the values of this country. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Now to some of the local headlines that we're following for you this morning. Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,500 reward for information about the shooting death of a Vancouver man. 19-year-old Tyler Harris was found dead last August at his apartment complex on Northeast 50th Court. Police are looking for two women and one man in connection with that crime. If you have a tip about what happened, you can pass it along and still remain anonymous. Corbett firefighters rescued a hiker and her four kids after the woman suffered a medical emergency on Wakina Falls Trail. Crews posted these photos on Twitter. They say everyone is safe and doing okay this morning. And Oregon's unemployment rate dropped slightly last month. It's now 4%, down from 4.2. In February, 59,000 Oregonians had been unemployed for less than six months, which was close to a 20-year low. The state saw big hiring gains in leisure and hospitality, construction, health care, and social assistance. And those are some of your Wednesday morning headlines. Let's talk about those gas prices because crude oil over the last week has been on another climb. David Molko has a warning this morning because it seems some thieves out there have found an opportunity to steal gas right out of your tank. He saunters down the street, then disappears from view. His handiwork blocked by his big blue target. Somebody who drilled uh, the, my gas tank. 20 seconds later, around 2 on Saturday morning, David Rossman's home security system caught what he thought was the thief leaving. Only surprise to return moments later, and this time with wheels. This surveillance image taken from across North Holman Street in Portland shows the culprit carrying what looks like a gas can. And in the process, we figured out that he walked over here, drilled it, then went back, got his vehicle, came back, put gas in his car, and left the tank draining as he drove off. It's happened a couple of different times. Some 80 miles south at this Lebanon surf coast station, office manager Lisa Marks is equally fed up. All of our trucks have been vandalized, every single one of them. And so they've installed an electric fence to protect this fleet of U-Hauls from the rise, she says, in from the tank. Thefts. New cameras are going in on top of the fence. They aren't there yet. I come out and found the remnants of the rest of my tank emptied. Rossman left with a mess to clean up his wheels in the shop. Likely just this thief's latest target. David Molko, KGW News. Well, one idea to save Oregonians some money at the pump is temporarily suspend the state's fuel tax. It's set at 38 cents a gallon, but the governor's office says it's a pretty tricky proposal. That's because the tax is a major contributor to the State Department of Transportation and for city budgets. ODOT says suspending it would likely hurt more than it helps. Pretty shortly, ODOT and all the cities and counties that rely on the gas tax as one of their major funding sources could, could run into some challenges. For some of us, that could mean the money we have available just to keep the, the roads open and safe day to day with our maintenance forces out there. Uh, that money could run short pretty quickly. There are always trade-offs, right? Georgia and Maryland have temporarily paused their gas taxes. There is no indication that will happen in Oregon. 38 cents a gallon. That would be nice mm. to shave that right off well, the top. something, yeah. I filled up the other day, and I usually say no receipt, you know, and just go. But I'm well, like, wanted to see. all right, just show it to yeah. me. It's almost $70 to fill up. I was like, oh, yeah. my goodness. Mm-hmm.
Uh, look, you're just shaking your head. Wow. I mean, yesterday I did something I, I, don't, I rarely do. I almost always fill up. And yesterday I, I just got to put $40 in, mm -hmm. which is odd for me, but I didn't feel like spending probably would have been $60, $65. Exactly. I feel you. I think it all hurts in the long run, though. I'll get this thing right. I yeah, mean, I you'll pay it eventually. I saved some money yesterday, but yeah. All right, uh, big gap on the satellite picture. We have weekend rain chances still looming. We have a weak system moving in uh, this morning with the rain ban offshore, but Futurecast does show a shower chance starting as early as this morning. It's go through your day. By the way, uh, dry but foggy out right now and low cloudiness just really starting to increase into the area. This shows there could be some specks of light rain around 830 or so, but here comes the main batch of rain that we expect today. This is one o'clock in the afternoon, so pretty wet at the coast before noon. And then once we get into the afternoon, rain chances really pick up and there will be mostly light rain showers or areas passing during the afternoon hours. Here we are at 4 p.m. And then this evening that pushes off to the east and gets out of here. We're back to dry weather tomorrow. Here's a foggy look at downtown, certainly foggy behind the cityscape up into the West Hills. 49 still in that same mild batch of air that did produce some 70 degree numbers yesterday. Here's a look at uh, Newport 48, Kelso, Salem, Eugene, all in the 50s, PDX 49. We have a bit of an east wind coming out of the gorge this morning uh, to about 17 miles prior. Last time I checked at Trotdale, that wind actually would kick around to the south during the day. All right, uh, Salem 61 still with the clouds and some light showers coming in. Southwest winds 5 to 15 miles prior, mostly light showers, I should say. Battleground 57, Longview also in the 50s and about 60 degrees in Vancouver. Seven day numbers. So tomorrow drive 63, some cool spots in the 30s in the morning. I've added a shower chance late Friday. All of a sudden, the weekend forecast is uncertain. I'm sure if you're flipping around different places today, you're going to find anything from completely dry forecast being given to you to a rain chance. I think it's uncertain right now. We'll include a shower chance both days. Likely rain coming in on Monday. Should know more about the weekend tomorrow. That's if I get a good night's sleep tonight, make a fresh <laughs> pot of coffee. So many things need to come into <laughs> alignment. All right, Rod, thank you so much. I'm the same way. Well, Portland loves its food, and there's a new program from a James Beard nominated chef where you can choose a new soup each week while supporting a nonprofit doing something about our homeless crisis, and it couldn't be more convenient. The details coming up in three minutes.